The operation to defeat the gun devil gears up to begin with Makima revealing a shocking fact about the nature of the devil. But before we get here, let's go back following the wreckage Santa Claus has caused from the International Assassins incident. Denji awakes one morning, greeted by Aki. He comments on Aki's missing arm, one of which was able to be reattached after the attack of the Darkness Devil. Sadly, however, Angel Devil lost both arms, whilst Beam and Violence Fiend both died and Kobeni resigned. Aki informs Denji and Power of his plans to visit Hokkaido in order to visit his family grave. They insist on joining Aki as he reluctantly agrees. After arriving at his family grave, Aki begins to pray. Noting Denji's and Power's disappearance, he sees them eating rotten offerings left on the graves as Power vomits up the food before screaming that it was a plot by the Darkness Devil. Aki lets out an exasperated sigh. Later at the end, Aki is seen looking out the window at the snow. Denji awakes and joins him as Aki comments that he visits his family grave each year and is usually miserable. However, because of Power and Denji, the two of them manages to keep him distracted the entire time. The next day, back in Tokyo, Aki speaks with Kishibe and asks whether Division 4 could be removed from the Gun Devil Hunt, surprising him. Kishibe informs Aki that the mission will be classified, meaning Aki may never hear of its outcome unless directly involved. However, Aki still agrees. Asking why he changed his mind, Aki thinks back to seeing Denji and Powers unconscious and injured bodies in hell before responding, I got cold feet. Back at the Aki residence, as Denji and Aki wash dishes, they suddenly receive a phone call summoning them to the bureau. Meeting with Makima, she informs the group that while she has taken Aki and the rest of Division 4 off of the Gun Devil mission, Denji and Power are still required to go. She asks Aki to leave if he does not intend to join them. Troubled, Aki asks to rejoin the mission to which Makima swiftly agrees. Having already begun the operation, Makima details the current status of the Gun Devil, explaining that it had already been defeated and confined. Denji and Aki respond with shock as Makima explains it was found dead shortly after its initial attack before being split up into fragments. Aki asks about the guns used previously against the gun devils only for Makima to reveal they were created by man. She elaborates, explaining that though there is an official global ban on firearms, each government secretly manufactures and circulates guns on the black market. In doing so, the remaining fragments of the gun devil are given more power. Hearing this, Aki realizes that in order to destroy the gun devil, the Bureau will need to go against the wishes of every global superpower. Makima agrees, calling the plan a kind of war. Outside, Denji and Power question Aki's despondence. He explains that even after they killed the gun devil, the body would merely be collected by the Japanese government, continuing the cycle of global hostilities whilst meaning the gun devil can never truly die. Suddenly, Aki is given a vision of the future by the future devil, reacting with sudden intense fear. That night alone, Aki summons the future <laughs> devil. Asking about the vision, the future devil explains that it is of a near and unavoidable future, one in which Aki and Power are killed by Denji, followed by the arrival of the devil that devils fear the most. The next day, Aki visits Angel Devil's hospital bed, having explained his future vision to him. He suggests asking Makima for advice as the two leave to find her. As they walk, Angel suggests Aki run away and leave his life behind in order to prevent his own death. Aki refuses, however, citing Denji, Power, and Makima as reasons to stay. Surprised by his mentioning of Makima, Angel comments on Aki's feelings for her. As the pair spot Makima, Aki also quietly begins to wonder why he likes her. Aki asks why she's there, to which he responds that she was simply waiting. Regardless, Aki explains his vision and desire to keep Denji and Power safe. Crying, Aki blames himself for his brother's death and promises to make any contract with any devil to protect them. Hearing this, Makima looks him in the eye before asking him to make a contract with her. Aki reacts with shock as Makima repeats herself, now commanding to accept the contract. As Angel Devil looks on, he slowly begins to remember the beach as the location he was first found. He gradually remembers a community of people who took him in and looked after him. He then remembers Makima arriving on the beach and asking to see his powers. Though he refused, she insisted, ordering him to use them. He then reawoke hours later, having absorbed the lives of everyone in the village. Snapping back to the present, Angel Devil reacts with horror as he sees Aki accept Makima's contract. Angel Devil begins to shout to Makima as she she calmly comments on him regaining his memories. Using 10 years of life force to create a blade, Angel Devil lunges at Makima. However, she merely says the word, down, and Angel Devil crumples to the floor. She kneels next to him, ordering to give his all to her, to which he agrees. Apologizing to the two of them, Makima explains that due to the spies within the bureau, the hunt for the gun devil was always a bluff plan to fail, hiding her ulterior plan. If we don't kill Makima now, 
the worst possible peace will descend upon humanity. In the United States, the president makes a contract with the gun devil, offering one year of the lifespan of all US citizens in return for killing Makima, revealing her to be the controlled devil. Back in Japan, in the midst of the church bells ringing and the choir singing, Makima incites the gun devil to show itself. On September 12, 1997, the gun devil appears in Japan, immediately killing every adult male and child within a 1500 meter area. As the full form of the gun devil is slowly revealed, a list of all of its victims is shown. Exactly four seconds after its first appearance, the gun devil pauses before locking its weapons onto Makima. One second later, Makima is shot through the head, marking her 29th recorded death. She instantly recovers, however, as her brain matter forms a halo around her head. The gun devil again pauses. As Makima stands, the body of Prince, Sawatari, Aki, Angel, Kuros, and Tendo are all shown attached to her. Summoning the combined power of all their devil contracts, a sudden hole opens up in the sky above the gun devil as a swarm of creatures with blades descend. Elsewhere, Denji hears a knock on the door and goes to answer it, assuming Aki is home. Denji is interrupted in opening the door by the phone suddenly ringing. On the other end is Makima, who briefly explains the gun devil's reappearance and informs Denji that a corpse reanimated by the devil is ringing the doorbell. Despite this call, both Denji and Power are skeptical, believing the person at the door to be Aki. As Denji approaches the door, he suddenly grows hesitant and tells Power to leave with Miyawi from the balcony. Denji, still uncertain, opens the door. Revealing the reanimated corpse of Aki, now controlled by the gun devil. Denji, not recognizing it, awkwardly asks whether the two must now fight. The view changes to Aki's perspective. In his mind, the two of them are children engaged in a snowball fight. However, each snowball thrown by Aki translates to a massively destructive gun blast in the real world, taking out entire city blocks each time. Denji is torn in half by a blast, commands power to flee as the two realize the creature is in fact Aki. As Aki leaps out of the building to attack power, Denji transforms and blocks his attack. As Denji begins to attack, Aki views this as Denji playfully throws throwing snowballs back at him. The battle escalates with every blast by Aki quickly leveling massive amounts of destruction in the surrounding area with many casualties. As Denji begs Aki to return to normal, Aki's fantasy self blocks out the plea and comments how for the first time in his life he's actually having fun. Denji is hit in the stomach by a blast, knocking him down. In the real world, Denji attempts to defend himself but unwilling to hurt Aki, is forced to simply beg him to turn back. After being blasted and losing an arm and both legs, Denji lies crippled in the ruins of a building. Slowly, a crowd of onlookers gather around before they each give Denji blood and beg him to defeat Aki in order to save them. In Aki's fantasy, Denji begins throwing snowballs back. Though Aki is excited by this, he quickly notices Denji is crying. In order to stop this, Aki admits defeat. When he looks back, he notices Denji is gone, replaced by his younger brother Tayo. In the real world, it is revealed that in order to stop his onslaught, Denji stabbed Aki with his chainsaws, killing him. As Denji returns to his human form in shock, the future devil appears and laughs. <laughs> Aki Hayakawa, you died in the worst possible way for the chainsaw boy. <laughs> the final moments of Aki's life shows him in his fantasy, playing catch with his brother. The climactic finale to Chainsaw Man Part 1, The Control Devil Arc, is next.